Okay, and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to start building out our first function, which we called new game button, which is attached to this start new game button over here. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and try to run this in our simulator. So if you go up to the upper left hand corner over here, you'll see our iPhone simulators right here. So what we're going to need to do is just click on this line here where it says iPhone 6 Plus and change it to whatever you want. Um, we set ours up, I think it was the 4.7, so that is going to look really good in the iPhone 6 simulator. So we can do that here. And then when you get more advanced and you want to deploy your apps to your actual iPhone or your iPad, you just merely need to plug in your device to a cord and to plug that into your laptop or desktop. And then you'll be able to select that from up here where it says iOS device. Okay, now to build and run, we're just going to click this triangle. And the first time it runs, it usually will take some time to compile. Okay, so once the simulator comes up, it looks pretty good. It looks almost exactly like we've, we've formatted it. So if I go and I click on these buttons, nothing happens. And let's see if I type in our text field. Now, sometimes you just need to give it a little bit of moment for it to wake up. If you do not see the keyboard coming up here, you just merely go to the top of your window here. Now, you, my camera is out of view, but it's our simulator window, so make sure your simulator is highlighted. You're going to see a button that says hardware. Click on hardware, and go down to where it says keyboard, and simply toggle software keyboard. This will bring up the um, simulator's keyboard, and we can type away. Of course, nothing's going to happen when we check our answer. Okay, so let's get ahead and let's start programming out what it means to, what it, what, sorry, what happens when we click the Start New Game button. All right, let's move right along. I'm going to shut out my simulator, and I think I'm going to close out this split screen. I don't really need it. Um, you guys can always switch back to main.storyboard if you want to take a look at the actual physical app that we're building. So I'm going to go up here, click the leftmost button, and then I'm going to go back to the left and click on my view controller dot swift. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. And this is going to be called an it's going to be an array. So I'm going to just type it in and then I'll explain. So I'm going to say var item array is going to be equal to open and close square bracket. And the first item within quotes, I'm going to say car. And then outside of the quotes, in the second one, house. And quote, comma. Let's see, boat. Doesn't really matter what I'm writing this in for now. Comma. And comma, tree. And quote. Okay, so this is an array. And for, for this to purpose, I'm just going to go over it briefly. An array is a collection of things. And right now, this is a collection of strings. Okay, and strings are denoted with these quotation marks uh, around it. Okay, so I'm calling something a variable. It's called item array, and it's going to house, <laughs> or it's going to hold, I should say, I don't want to confuse you, four different items. All right, so that's good. In our full-length course, the Learn iOS 9 app development course, we go into a lot of detail in dealing with arrays and dictionaries and other type of collections and how to use them. But for this purpose, we're just going to simply just note that this is a variable and it's an array and it's written out like this. This is the syntax for that. Okay. The next thing I need to do for our games played is I'm also going to say var. We're going to call this games played. And that's going to be equal to zero. This does not need to be around quotes. This is an integer, which is just a number. It is not a string. Okay, so this means when the button is clicked, we're going to immediately change the number of games played to one because we're starting a new game. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Now, let's get down into our IB funk new game button, which is our new function. We're going to get in here and we're going to write all the code we need to enact that new game button. And just for recording purposes, let me give ourselves a little bit more room. So we're not crowded on the screen. Okay, good to go. All right. Well, the first thing I want to do, I want this simulator to pick one of these items at random. Okay. Now, arrays have 
something called an index or indices, however you want to pronounce the plural of that. So their index count starts with zero. So this is at index zero. This is at index one. This is at index two and index three. There are four items. They're starting with zero. I know that sounds a little odd, but it becomes more second nature as you get into programming a little bit more. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna say let random, as soon as I can type it, <laughs> let random number be equal to, and I'm gonna type this out and explain it in a minute. Do not get alarmed by the, by the oddity of this syntax. I'm gonna say int arc for random, open and close parentheses, and I'm gonna close that entire parentheses out. I'm gonna add the percent mark, and I'm gonna say item item array dot count. So what this means is like, hey, this is a constant, and it's a constant because we use the keyword let. We're not gonna really change this code, okay? Versus variable, this is gonna change. So I say let random number is equal to now, Swift has a built-in function. It's called arc for random. All right. So we're going to grab something random. We're going to declare it as an integer. And um, I know this is going to get confusing for your first line of code uh, because we need a random number. Now, how many do we need? Now, I could have just said, delete that. I could have just said arc for random four because I'm going to pick a random number that's going to really relate to one of these four items. But suppose I have an app that now then adds to the array. I'm not gonna have. I'm gonna have to change that account. That counts. So rather, I'm gonna leave that blank, and I'm gonna use the percent mark. It's a. I think it's called module something like that. Module or something. Anyhow, that's the format for that. And we want item dot item array dot count. So this means even if we only had three items in here, this code would still work but we're gonna just go back and make sure we leave that in there. All right, so this, yeah, I know this is your first line of writing a program. It is looks a little funky, pardon the pun, but basically we're setting up a random number from the count of all of these. We're gonna assign that random number to one of these words. So in this line, I'm going to say, let i be equal to random number. So we're grabbing a random number through this uh, method in here, okay? And we're setting the value of i to whatever that random number is. All right, so now, what I wanna go back up here is we forgot to create a variable that's gonna hold, hold our correct answer. So whatever answer the simulator picks, it, we're gonna hold it in to this um, variable. And we're just gonna initiate it by say correct answer is equal to an empty string because we don't know what's gonna be the correct answer. All right, let's go back down here let i equal random number. Then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say, hey, correct answer. We're gonna set your value to item array at index i, not one, i. All right, what does this mean? All right, so if this random number turns out to be zero, okay? So we're gonna say correct answer is going to be the item or the item at index zero. What's that index zero? Well, car is at index zero. Okay, so because our indexes are numbers and these are strings, we had to actually um, help with the casting in integer. Again, do not worry about this right now if this is your very first attempt at coding. We get into a lot more detail on how to do this in our course, but I just want you to have fun with this lesson. Okay, so just correct answer is equal to item array dot i and for kicks, when we run this simulator, I'm gonna have that print out so that we know what the correct answer is. This helps in debugging anything, so it would be kind of silly just every time it ran for the, you as a developer to have to guess which the answer is. So we're gonna have it print to our console, and that is just simply done as the word print, open and close, parentheses, and whatever you want to print. I could have just typed in there with quotation marks, hi there, but I wanna see what the correct answer is. All right, what else do I want to do when I press this button? Well, I want our games played, so our games played value, excuse me, to be equal to games played plus one, okay? So if our games played is zero, then this is gonna be, every time you press the new game button, it's gonna say, hey, you just played a game. 
So you can kind of compete with yourself and see how high of a score you can get within, like, say, five games or something. So we're just going to add this feature that says, hey, games played, increase yourself by one. Now, there is a shortcut. You can do either one of these. You can also say games played plus plus. Both of these will increment it by one. But since we're just starting out, let's just make it a little bit more obvious. Now, the last thing we need to do for this function is we're going to have our games label dot text field, or sorry, text property. We're going to have that set to a string, and it's going to say games played colon. And here's what I want you to do. I'm going to write, type it out, and then explain, explain it. Backslash, open bracket, games played variable. There we go. Close quotation marks. All right, what is this doing? So we're saying that our games label, which is up here, Hold on a second. Let me see if I can open up that simulator for you. So what we want to do is when we start the new game uh, label, we want the games label.txt. We want this where it says games played. So we're going to say games labeled is going to now this whole text is not going to say games played colon. It's going to say games played colon forward slash. It's going to replace this entire text. I could say, hey, you just played your, you know, second game or something like that, but I'm just laying it out this way. All right, so that's going to say games play. This is a placeholder. This backslash open parentheses, close parentheses is going to hold the value of whatever I put into that. Well, what am I going to put into it? I'm going to put into it the value that's in that. All right, without further ado, let's run the simulator. Okay, here's our simulator. Let's check it out. We're going to click our start new game. And if you look down here in the console, here, I'll put it over here. Here is our print correct answer line. Okay, so the simulator says, hey, sh here's the answer. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so we know it's car. And of course, I could type in car and hit my check answer. Nothing's going to happen. In fact, notice the keyboard still stays up here. So we still, there's a lot of the heavy duty stuff we're going to do in the next lecture or two in um, our check answer. One of them being dismissing the keyboard. But for now, we've got this working out great. Our games played has increased by one. Let me just click that again. Start new game. Game two. Games played is now switched to two. And we have our new answer down here. Okay. We are looking good. We've got this one last function to code, as well as handling the dismissal of this keyboard. Okay, I'll see you in the next lecture.